on behalf of Public Affairs Center, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming each one of you to the virtual event, launch of Public Affairs Index 2020. Without much ado, I welcome Mr. Guru Charan, Director, Public Affairs Center, to kickstart the virtual event by delivering the opening remark and also providing an overview of PI 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to welcome all of you to this virtual launch of the fifth edition of the Public Affairs Index 2020. As director of the Public Affairs Center, this event being held virtually holds special significance to our organization in that not only is it the culmination of the five years of data-based work that we have done in assessing the quality and adequacy of the governance of states, it has been a challenge in these very difficult times to complete a complex project such as this on time. I want to welcome on virtual mode, Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, Chairman, Public Affairs Center, who will in a short while release our flagship publication, ranking the states of India on governance. I also welcome Dr. A. Ravindra, who will shortly announce the names of the best performing states and union territories. It is paradoxical that only at a time of unprecedented disruption, as in the wake of COVID-19, there should be an upsurge of interest in data-based analytics, epidemiological and economic, whose subject matter often is fully comprehensible only to a small group of experts. Yet, the realm that matters to us most preceding the pandemic, and regardless of it, the human development challenges across the country, and the data-based measurement of the quality and adequacy of the response of the states to them appear not to have captured the mind space of policymakers, development practitioners, and academics to the same degree. This is indeed ironic because the states in India represent the theaters of development praxis. And what the states do and how, or what they fail to do and why, are concerns that can scarcely be exaggerated. The Public Affairs Index is an indispensable part of these concerns. And this fifth annual edition, PI 2020, from a data-based measurement perspective, serves as a kind of summation of the work that the Public Affairs Center has been advancing for the past five years. There is no a priori reason to suppose that PI 2020 presents that which is new, comprehensive, or interesting. But those readers who take a deep dive into it will find just rewards. What it does present is an evidence-based assessment of human development and governance across the states in India. PI 2020 will have served its purpose if it draws attention to the reality that is India, or even an approximation of it, and therefore not to be set aside lightly. It would be better still if the state governments are able to draw actionable insights from it that enable them to do better in the years ahead, thus hastening the process of development convergence that PI 2020 points to. It is with this sense of humility and optimism that the Public Affairs Center presents the Public Affairs Index 2020. Finally, before I conclude, I must share another unique feature of PI 2020. It is the work of an all-women's team. Aparna Shivaraman, Samridhi Pandey, and Brinalini Kabur constituted the research team led by Aparna that has produced, to my mind, an outstanding analytical report. 
Dr. Anapurna and Isha Daftari were part of the production team, which has ensured that the volume that we present to the public maintains very high standards. We are truly proud of this team, and I want to congratulate them on this remarkable effort. I now invite Dr. Kasturi Rangan to release the Public Affairs Index 2020. Thank you all. Dr. Ravindra Gurcharan, members of the Board of the Public Affairs Center, ladies and gentlemen. It is with a deep sense of satisfaction that I participate in the release of the fifth edition of the Public Affairs Index 2020. With the Public Affairs Center, PAC, launched the Public Affairs Index in 2016, the idea was simple. How can we use publicly available data to measure and compare the performance of states on governance? The idea rested on the assumption that while measuring governance is a challenge, it's a fundamental step in designing and implementing policies that strengthen the symbiotic relationship between governance and sustainable development outcomes. This resolve has been strengthened given the events that have unfolded during the current pandemic 2019 has only heightened the visible and invisible fraud lines across Indian states and the need to strive towards improving the quality of governance. Real obstacles stand in the path of a fuller understanding of persistent intergenerational deprivation and loss of opportunity challenges that appear to reproduce themselves, especially in parts of some states. To stay, begin with, the influence of one-size-fits-all approach on our development outlook has been pervasive and the overwhelming majority of interventions, including centrally sponsored schemes, designed and implemented mechanically, unwittingly perhaps, often maintaining or running counter to the doctrine of objective pluralism. PAI 2020 provides evidence-based insights on subnational governance and in particular, drawing on government data, an assessment of the quality and adequacy of governance in the states. I must commend the two new dimensions on measuring governance that has been introduced in PI 2020 and will be of interest to the readers. First, the delta analysis that provides a separate pillar level ranking of states on their recent performance average year pay, five year period of 2015 to 2020 and presents interesting results and rather different rankings of states when assessed without the weight of legacy data. And second, an overview of the disparities between the states that highlight the differing patterns of inequality across India and raises the question of why the poverty inducing impact of quality growth in some states has been more than in other similarly placed states. Both these must give us pause and compel us to reflect on the economic and social transition that is underway in India and what is and what is implication for future development praxis might be. I congratulate Gurcharan, the director of the Public Affairs Center and his team for bringing out a scientific, data-based and insightful assessment of the subnational governance in India. It is with great pleasure that I release the Public Affairs Center Index 2020 in this virtual launch. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your kind and wonderful words. PAC has always and will always look forward to your guidance and encouragement, specifically your statement on the influence of a one-size-fits-all approach on a development outlook has been pervasive is very apt. PI 2020 is an effort of several team members from PAC. I now request Aparna Shivaraman, Program Officer, to make a presentation on the key findings. The Public Affairs Index, in simple layman terms, is a data-driven framework 
which ranks the states and union territories of India on various parameters of governance. The index uses data that is available in the public domain to measure, compare, and evaluate the performance of subnational governments. Before delving into the findings of PI 2020, let me take you through the new additions that we have this year. The first and most significant is the inclusion of union territories into the PI framework. Subsequently, we now have 18 large states, that is states with populations greater than 2 crore, 11 small states, states with population less than 2 crore, and 7 union territories. The second change in PI 2020 is the use of a new technique called pairwise correlation that we have used to finalize the indicators. I will go into this in detail when we come to the methodology section. The third is the inclusion of an independent review chapter that describes the evolution of the public affairs index from its inception in 2016 to the fifth edition that is being launched today. PI 2020 has also included two new chapters to provide an in-depth analysis of how the states have performed over time and how does this manifest in the future. Similar to PI 2019, PI 2020 has a four-tier model with three pillars, five themes, 13 sustainable development goals, and 50 indicators. The three pillars at the apex of the PI model are the cornerstones of sustainable development, equity, growth, and sustainability. To measure these broad pillars, the model consists of five themes that have been adopted from the worldwide governance indicators, voice and accountability, government effectiveness, rule of law, regulatory quality, and the control of corruption. Below these five themes are 13 of the 17 sustainable development goals that we feel are crucial from the perspective of subnational governments. This is also in line with India's quest to holistically achieve the SDG agenda by 2030. Including the SDGs in the PI model provides us with the opportunity to understand the efforts that individual states are taking to advance the SDG agenda. Finally, at the bottom of the model are 50 indicators that comprehensively capture governance in its various facets. We will now move on to the methodology used to the rep for the development of the Public Affairs Index 2020. The methodology used in PI 2020 is more or less similar to that of PI 2019 with only one change. That is the use of a technique called pairwise correlation to finalize indicators. To start off with, we took the 49 indicators that we had used for the development of the Public Affairs Index 2019. And what we did was that we used this technique of pairwise correlation to identify those pairs of indicators that may be highly correlated. With this, we were able to comprehensively eliminate one indicator which we felt may not be representing governance to the utmost. And this gave us indicators that are completely standalone. To this, we've also identified indicators that are crucial from a human development perspective, but were not part of the model previously. With this, we arrived at our final set of 50 indicators and next began the step of data collection and cleaning. Data for all 50 indicators have been collected from central government sources to avoid bias in any form. Once the data was collected, we standardized the data using either gross state domestic product, population, or geographical area to ensure that all states are comparable. Once data was collected and standardized, the next step was the conversion of each data point into a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. What this allowed for was to capture in greater detail the nuances in the performance of the states. And at this stage, we also ensured that all indicators were moving in the same direction. That is, they were unidirectional. This was to ensure that positive indicators such as immunization and negative indicators such as crime rates were all taken care of in the model. Finally, the technique of principal component analysis was used to scientifically assign scores and ranks for all the states, and that led us to the development of the Public Affairs Index 2020. Now we'll move on to some of the key findings from PI 2020 and the results from some of the analysis that we have conducted. The first pillar, equity, included a set of 23 indicators measured across five themes. 
Pi 2020 reinforces our finding from Pi 2019 that there exists a varying degree of inequality across the states of India. This inequality is not just in terms of income inequality, but is more to do with social and gender inequalities prevalent in society. However, at this juncture, I must add that compared to Pi 2019, all states have shown an improvement in equity performance, but this still is not enough if we are to achieve the SDG agenda in 2013. What we did next was a correlation analysis between the Pi 2020 scores and the scores of the equity pillar. And what we observed is that performance in the equity parameters significantly influences the performance at the overall level in the case of large states, something that we had not seen last year. Conversely, in the case of the small states, equity indicators do not significantly affect their performance. This is a complete reversal from our findings in 2019. In the union territories as well, performance in the equity parameters do not significantly influence their overall performance. What we've also done is to understand at the equity, growth and sustainability level, the specific sustainable development goals that are impacting performance. In equity, we see that the driving SDG common across large states, small states and union territories is SDG 16, which focuses on indicators of corruption and crimes against women, children and social minorities. This indicates the fact that all state governments need to prioritize equity in order to advance for sustainable development. In terms of growth, we have 20 indicators measured across two themes. One of our first findings in the growth pillar is that the top five large states in this pillar are all South Indian states. From a correlation analysis perspective, we see that similar to Pi 2019, the performance in the growth parameters in the case of large states significantly influences their overall performance. But what is different is that the degree to which this influence occurs is much greater this year than it was last year. Surprisingly, and a uh, departure from 2019 findings is that in the case of small states as well, growth performance significantly affects their overall performance. And this is a case that we've observed in the union territories as well, which means that overall rankings in all three categories are significantly growth driven. At the SDG level, all three categories of states show a strong correlation with SDG 6, indicating that access to clean water and sanitation must be prioritized. Apart from that, in the large states, SDGs 3, 4, 7 and 11 emerge significant, while in the small states, SDG 8, 9 and 11 appear significant. In the case of union territories, SDG 7 shows the strongest correlation. Moving to the sustainability pillar, we had seven indicators over two themes. The first finding was that unlike Pi 2019, where the top five states were all South Indian states, this year that is not the case. And that is a cause of concern for the South Indian states if they have slipped ranking. Similar to the last year, performance in sustainability significantly influences overall performance irrespective of the category of states. At the SDG level, we see that SDG 7 is a driving factor in the large states and the union territories, while SDG 15 is the only indicator that drives performance in the case of small states. A new addition in Pi 2020 has been the inclusion of a chapter on the delta analysis. The delta is used to measure change over a period of time, which in this case is a five-year period coinciding with the launch of the Public Affairs Index. Uh, our objective was simple. It was to understand whether states are actually improving in various facets over time or is it the weight of legacy data. For this delta analysis, we had a total of 13 indicators across the three pillars of equity, growth and sustainability. And these were the indicators that we felt were the most crucial from a human development perspective. In the case of equity, we see that amongst the large states, Bihar and Odisha, which have been consistent poor performers in the public affairs index, emerge as the states with the most progress in the equity indicators, while states like Kerala, Maharashtra and Punjab that have been consistent top performers have all seen the least growth. A similar case emerges in the case of small states with Mizoram showing the most progress and Goa, which is a consistent top performer, the least. We see, this, we see the same pattern playing out in the case of the growth and sustainability pillars as well. In the case of growth, Bihar, Assam, Odisha, Mizoram and Meghalaya have seen a considerable growth, 
while Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Himachal Pradesh are at the bottom. Finally, in terms of the sustainability pillar, Odisha, Haryana, Goa and Delhi emerge as consistent top performers. The good performing states in the Pi 2020 sustainability rankings to find their place in the top of the Delta rankings, while Bihar, Maharashtra, Meghalaya and Mizoram feature towards the bottom. A striking finding from the Delta analysis is that Uttar Pradesh, which has been a consistent poor performer across all editions of the Public Affairs Index, finds itself at the bottom of the Delta rankings as well, indicating that the state has shown very minimal growth over the past years. And this must be prioritized urgently. What the Delta analysis also reveals to us is that traditionally poor performing states are all catching up with the traditionally high performing states, albeit at a very slow rate. While the objective of the Public Affairs Index is to rank and compare the performance of states, PI 2020 decided to go a step further and attempt to understand the regional disparities that result in these rankings. For this, states were classified into two categories based on the PI 2020 rank scores, high performing and low performing. Subsequently, separate regression models were run to understand the impact of equity and sustainability indicators on growth, equity and growth indicators on sustainability, and growth and sustainability indicators on the equity pillar. What we've observed was that crimes against women, particularly cases of rapes, have a negative relationship with overall growth. Similarly, female labor force participation rate shows a negative correlation with growth, indicating that while states may be growing, they are growing at the cost of widening gender disparities. Further, agricultural distress measured in terms of rural indebtedness and farmer suicides are significant in impacting the growth performance of states, again indicating to a high degree of inequality. We also undertook an analysis to understand whether states were moving towards a steady growth rate over a period of time. And for this, the states were categorized into three categories, again based on the PI 2020 scores. What we observed is that in the long run, all states, irrespective of category, are moving towards a steady state of growth. But what we do notice is that the mid and poor performing states are doing so at a much slower rate as compared to the high performing states. Again, when we look at female labor force participation, we see that it is significant for high and mid performing states, but female labor force participation does not impact the performance of the poor performing states over time and this needs to be addressed. Finally, we've considered a cluster analysis to understand patterns in which the states are grouped when we look at the PI 2020 scores. Similar to PI 2019, the cluster analysis has generated three clusters of states. The first cluster, highlighted in green, includes the top performing states from PI 2020 and is highly growth driven with moderate performance in equity and sustainability. The second cluster, in yellow, mostly includes northeastern states and is highly equity driven with moderate performance in growth and sustainability. This is a stark difference from the findings in PI 2019 where this cluster was extremely sustainability driven. Finally, we have the third cluster in purple which comprises of the poor performing states in PI 2020. Similar to PI 2019, this cluster shows poor performance in all three pillars of equity, growth and sustainability. And we also observe that a majority of the 100 aspirational districts identified by Niti Aayog also appear in this cluster. In conclusion, PI 2020 GA traits the importance of prioritizing equity and sustainability in states development practices and the need to ensure gender equality for sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you, Aparna. That was wonderful. Now, for the announcement, I request Dr. Ravindra, Board Member, Public Affairs Centre, to announce the winners and say a few words. Friends, it is my pleasure to join this virtual launch of the Public Affairs Index 2020, the annual flagship report of the Public Affairs Centre. Pi 2020 is a sincere effort to take a step forward in not just telling our audience what we are right now, but also flashing light on where this may lead, lead us and how we have progressed over time. It is an effort to recognize and highlight those states that may not be on the top right now but have been climbing up the ladder 
and hold up a mirror to the states who need to revamp development strategies to continue to grow. Y2020 is a conscious effort to present and analyze data in a manner that benefits not only policy makers and governments, but also provides common citizens an unbiased perspective on the development trajectory of states. Y2020 is written with the objective of providing a practical and realistic narrative of the quality of governance in Indian states to serve as a bridge between research and the real world. It is my privilege to announce the Pi 2020 state rankings. The states that have emerged as the best performers for the year 2019-2020 are 1. The best performing state in the large states category, Kerala. Two, the best performing state in the small states category, Goa. Three, the best performing union territory, Chandigarh. I trust that policymakers and academics alike will read Pi 2020 with great interest. Thank you all. Congratulations to all the winners. This is excellent. On behalf of Public Affairs Centre, once again, I would like to thank each one of you all to be part of this virtual event. Thank you.